Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and this is a tutorial on taking care of raising uh, Venus flytraps. You know, it's a very interesting little plant, part of one of the carnivorous plants, and the most famous one because of the way the traps close, and they close pretty quickly on prey, flies or ants or anything like that. Um, they are, you know, very peculiar plants for a couple of reasons. For that reason, for the way they eat. And they're also a little bit peculiar in the way you have to take care of them. You have to be a little bit careful. So let me go on to explain a couple of things about uh, Venus flytraps. First off, they need a lot of sunlight. So this is something you got to consider. 12 hours a day of sunlight, minimum. So find a really sunny spot, and if you have to, move them throughout the day to keep them going with sun. Um, you can grow them indoors or outdoors. And uh, they do have a dormant season for a couple of months, two or three months during the winter, where they die back, close down, and uh, go dormant, and then they, they, the bulbs will raise again and they will grow again in the spring. So that's something you have to consider. Well, let me talk about you're going to get some. Let's say you get some penis fly traps in the mail. Um, they've been through a lot of stress. They've been shipped. They've probably been on a truck or maybe on an airplane or who knows what temperatures they've been to. So they're very stressed. So when you do get them, I would highly recommend you don't transplant them right away if you don't want. I mean, you really shouldn't. You should wait a week. Let them uh, calm down and acclimate. Keep them watered, and they should come in some kind of a container like this, plastic see-through container. Leave them in there. Leave them in there for a week. They'll be fine. They need higher humidity, so in that container helps them to keep the higher humidity. So what I've been doing is watering them through the side to keep them nice and wet. A little bit of water accumulated in the bottom of the tray there, and just giving them plenty of sunlight. So after they've been here with me a couple of weeks now, I can transplant them. And I will discuss a little bit about the transplanting. But first, let me say, there's a, there's a really good option here if you didn't necessarily want to transplant, is you could do something like this right here. This is probably the best thing you can do. It's the easiest, too. So you get yourself some kind of container with a lid, and but don't close the lid completely. Put a layer of rocks, pebbles in the bottom, and then water. So the water doesn't quite come over the pebbles. A layer of water. Then you can put the plant right in there. So what happens is you get this in the sun, gets a lot of sunlight, and uh, because of all the water, some of it gets sucked up into the into the pot, and it keeps a lot of humidity inside this container. So that's really nice for the plant. They really like that kind of a thing. If you want to do a terrarium, which are actually terrariums are very good for Venus flytraps, for a couple of reasons, um, something like this is almost perfect because the shape of it will keep a lot of the, actually keep a lot of the moisture in and will raise the humidity level inside this container but yet it's open and it'll still get some air circulation which the fly traps like so so that's the, that's the basis there now let me talk about the soil they actually um venus fly traps do not derive their nutrients of food from the soil they do, of course derive them from insects uh, the soil for them is just a place for them to take root and hold on so they don't blow away in the wind. <laughs> Keeps them in one spot. So you don't actually use, do not ever use any potting soil with your Venus fly traps. No potting soil. Never ever um, use any kind of a, a, a fertilizer or anything like that. What you need to do is get yourself some peat moss, some sphagnum peat moss, and something called perlite. Perlite is an inorganic uh, it's just sort of like an inorganic compound. It's, it's, in, it's inert. And a big thing about both of these are, particularly the perlite, some perlites have nutrients added or um, uh, 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 different kinds of uh, fertilizers added to them. Do not get those. If you get perlite with a fertilizer or nutrient added, it will kill your Venus flytraps. So, all right, to make your little terrarium or to transplant your... Uh, the Venus fly traps, you would mix up half and half sphagnum moss and perlite and then, you, and then, uh, and then use that. Um, what you should do is similar to this. Put a layer of stones in the bottom of your jar, uh, your, your jar and then put, a, then put your layer of your mix. And then you can put a hole and then transplant your, your uh, Venus fly trap into it. That's going to be tricky. See it here? I'm gonna, this one. I'm going to tear this apart. The root ball to get at the rhizome here. See it? 
can see how this isn't soil. Right? I have another Venus light trap growing here. I can transplant this other one. There's a couple of them babies. So this can be transplanted. Let me strip this away to get at the white root bulb. It's called the rhizome. And you know this is a this is a bit of a trauma for the plant. So you want to go easy, real easy with it. Then you make yourself a hole in your terrarium and you put that in there gently. And handle it gently. Don't press on it too hard. And fill it in. Pull it in nicely. And just softly pack it down. Very nice. And I've got my little babies there, see them? They're wonderful. I don't know if you can see that. But those are just fantastic. I love those. I can plant those in there too. So the important thing is that it's firmly rooted. So now we can go ahead and water that and always just use distilled water. That's very important. And you want plenty of water in there. And what you want is you want water to be down in amidst the stones you put in. So that will always ensure it has a good moisture. And there you go. Venus flytrap. Now I still have plenty of access so I can feed it. Or it will catch its own food. One more thing. Uh, you're looking at this one here and you say, wow, look at that black end on that. And this is dying off. So what you can do is, when you have something like that, it's quite all right. You can snip that off. Just snip off the head there. But leave the uh, leaf because that's, that's the, the plant will still use that as for photosynthesis to gain uh, you know nutrition from the sun. So you can, but you can if the leaf itself is dying off, then you can trim the whole thing off, and trim it back as far as possibly can. Otherwise, you can just trim the head, and it'll be fine. Well, I've read a lot of stuff about feeding. And some people say feed it two or three times a month, don't overfeed it. Other people say you can feed it as often as it, as it wants. I tend to lean towards feeding it as often as it wants. You know, I say, you know, feed it, and then over the course of time, that's, it's, gonna, it's going to di digest and absorb the um, insect, then it's going to open back up again. And when it's open back up again, that means it's ready to eat, so go right ahead and feed it again. And of course, you've, I'm sure you've heard, you shouldn't trigger the traps without any food in them. And you really shouldn't. You know, don't be going in there with something and triggering the traps just for fun to watch it happen. It's very stressful for the plant. It takes a lot of energy and you don't want it to. It could kill the plant. So don't trigger them. Get yourself some food. I use baby crickets. They work terrific. You can get them at any any pet store. You know, baby crickets. Not the full size one unless you get really big Venus fly traps. Just get baby crickets. I'd buy them for 12 for a dollar. Um, you can also use ants. If you can get ants, you can use those in here. So 